Welcome to another edition on Career Pathway Explorations. My name is Jojo Dawadi, and I'm currently a senior at North Bend High School. In this ongoing series, we will be talking with community members in a variety of careers about how they arrived at their respective careers and what advice they can offer other students on how to be successful no matter what career path they choose after high school. Joining me today is Ms. Javi Montoya, who is both a bread baker and an entrepreneur. So Ms. Montoya, can you start off by telling, telling me a little bit about your official title and what you do? When I read that question, I was like, what would be my official title? So I this is a career change for me. So I'm a professional bread baker now, mm -hmm. but I went to business school and I also did a master in finance. So I like to say I'm an entrepreneur right now running Vituperio, which is my bread baking studio. So I think that summarizes it quite a bit. So I get to do everything mm -hmm. <laughs> from doing the breads, the pizza, selling the website, and then the business side of it too. Mm -hmm. Now, can you, I read a little bit about you on your website about how you've kind of first started school in Chile, then in New York, and then obviously you're here now. Can you talk to me a little bit about your pathway about becoming an entrepreneur? So I, when I was a senior, maybe a little bit earlier than that, of course, struggling, like, what am I supposed to do? Like, I'm so young, I need to decide the rest of my life. So I just wanted to study something that allowed me to have a broad range of options. Like, I don't, I didn't want to stick with one thing that was going to, like, like put me in, like, a, a specific spot because I had no idea what I wanted to do. So after like going to different schools and talking to different friends, like all their older sisters or brothers, I was like, oh, business could be something. I come from a family of entrepreneurs too, and they're all vets. So my mother was pushing me like, you should be a vet. And I was like, no. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I was like, I wanted something broader uh, to allow me to work here or in anywhere in the world. So I decided to go to business. Mm -hmm. And in Chile, it's five years. So I did school for five years and then I started working and I never found a job that really fulfilled me. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I need to start figuring out something else because this can't be the rest of my life. Uh, I did well, I worked in the finance industry, in corporate finance. So I did well, I had a nice salary. So that was great. But like the, it didn't make sense with mm -hmm. my lifestyle or what I wanted to do or see me in the next, I don't know, 20 years. Mm -hmm. So then my husband, he's also Chilean, and but he is half American too. And his parents were living here in Lansdale. Mm -hmm. So we used to come every year to visit them. And at some point we were like, what if we move? Like we were both looking to like start fresh, do something different. Mm -hmm. And we were like, okay, let's do it. And I was like, okay, if I move, I'm not getting a corporate job. Like this, this could be the perfect moment for me to do something different. And that's when I went to New York and I did the bread program with mm -hmm. the idea of opening the Tuperio here in the area, because we always also struggled trying to find like places to do things around here or finding like nice bread or bakeries or just a place to have fun. Mm-hmm. And can you talk about what it's like to obviously you have to know how to cook and you know have to you, you would have to know how to make everything on your menu but what's it like actually starting your own bakery like what are, what's the process of that it was hard because first of all not even in chile i would have known how to start it but less here in the us so i spent a couple of months like googling like okay how do you open a business and then from there, I started calling, like, okay, the health department, the Montgomery County inspection, and they were like, oh, you need this, this. So I just had, like, a book and notes where I wrote, okay, I need this. When I got that, I moved to the next step. And that kind of, like, brought me to being able to open up the place. Mm -hmm. So just calling and trying to find out. Mm -hmm. And earlier you mentioned how you kind of re later realized how business and kind of entrepreneurship wasn't really your your soul burning passion. So that's why you kind of moved on to um, owning a baker, a bakery. How did you kind of come to that realization? Were you always just kind of like was cooking always just kind of a passion for you? Or is that something you figured out later on in your life? 
I figured it out later on. Actually, if you ask my family, they will laugh that they can't even believe I'm related with food. <laughs> they will be like, you didn't know how to do anything. Mm -hmm. But when I was trying to have this career change, I started taking classes on everything, like photography, food photography, cooking, pastry, bread, anything that like opened up my mind because I was so into like the finance and my job and everything that I wasn't even looking, I didn't even have time to look to the side to see like maybe what were things that interest me or that I would enjoy doing. And that's when I found bread because I love the science behind it. And mm -hmm. it has a lot of math involved too. And this, I was like, this could be something fun and something that in Chile we eat a lot of bread. So I could relate to it in a different level too. Mm -hmm. So what was um, culinary school like? It was so much fun. Like I couldn't even believe I was there. I was like, I wished when I went to college for business that I could feel, feel this way every single day. It was so exciting, not only because of our classes, but because of the people that were there. Mm -hmm. I thought I was going to be the oldest when I enrolled at the bread school and I was so I'm 34 now. I was 30, turning 31. And I thought maybe I'm going to be with 21 year olds. And to my surprise, I was the youngest. Wow. So everyone was trying to do something different. And it was so inspiring to know like everyone's journeys and seeing that, okay, maybe I'm not that crazy trying to do something different at this age. You can absolutely do it at any moment in your life. You just have to have the energy and the mm -hmm. courage to do it and just do it and if you fail well we can try again mm -hmm. are there any things that kind of happen in culinary school that wouldn't normally happen at a graduate program at a certain college like are, are there exams or are you solely focused on cooking no it was well the program that i did was bread specifically mm -hmm. on bread so we did every type of international bread and you have uh, written exams and also practical exams. Mm. But as also, we were all older and everyone was trying to really learn. So it's a great like learning experience to be in that environment. I remember mm. when I was 18 going to college, we were all like, eh, we want to party on the weekend and we didn't even care if we learned. But here mm. we were all really like focused on really, really learning and trying to get the most of it. Mm -hmm. And when you first kind of started your small business, what was the first thing that kind of surprised you? The first thing that surprised me that it started working. <laughs> <laughs> so when I, well, it took me a while to set up the website. Uh, I did it by myself. Then mm -hmm. like, of course, opening the license, finding the kitchen. And when I started like posting my classes, and to started to see that people were booking them, I was like, wow, <laughs> I can't even believe it. I was new here in the area, well, to the country. So I was like, nobody even knows me. So they're like giving me their money for a service that I was like so surprised and so grateful that I took the chance to do it because it was starting, I was starting to see some results. Mm -hmm. And what do you most enjoy about it? I enjoy the, first of all, the flexibility that I don't have to be sitting down from eight to five mm -hmm. and doing something that I don't enjoy. I also enjoy a lot being able to do different tasks. So I take from the photos that you see on my website, I do the recipes, I get to teach, uh, I get to do this if mm -hmm. we can. Uh, so like the different options and things that I get to do in a single week. And, I would say no, no week is exactly the same as the other one. Mm -hmm. And also the creative side. So trying to, there's some days that I just need to sit and think, okay, what should I do? Like, for example, when the COVID hit us, I had all my classes sold for six months. I had to make refunds for everyone. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, what should I do now? So having to be able to figure out and see what could work to make the business stay on float. That was fun too. It was a struggle, but at the end you're like, it was fun. I got to think like outside the box 
and be able to see how I could move it out so it could work out. Would you say there's a stress factor when starting a small business? A lot, yes. Not only because you've put your money and effort into it, mm -hmm. but because there's also kind of like a like an ego thing. Like I tried my best, I put my heart into this. And like if people are not purchasing your products, it's like, okay, maybe it wasn't that exciting. It was exciting for me only. <laughs> But I feel that the reward compensates absolutely the stress factor that you get anyways at a corporate job. Mm -hmm. When you first launched the bakery, was there a time where things weren't looking so good and then all of a sudden everything started turning on the upside? Or was it always just kind of uh, people were, were people just always interested? No, the, at the beginning, it's hard because nobody knows you. You barely mm. have a website. So if people Google you, they won't find you. So I, I feel like the first six months was hard to be able to get my name out there. But just having like the mindset and the feedback from the people that went to some of my classes, like keeps you going. And you're like, okay, yeah, people like it. Okay, I need to be patient and I need to wait. I mm. feel that today... And you're younger than I am. Like we are so motivated by like instant results. Like you Google something, you get the result. You want something, you have it now. And having your business an entrepreneur, it requires having some patience. Maybe some that we weren't uh, really trained to have. Like my mother always tells me, you guys, you don't have patience. Like <laughs> you want everything now, everything instant. And these things take time. And I was like, mom, I don't have time. <laughs> I need to see some results soon at least. But I think that's a, a learning process. Mm -hmm. And you talked about how patience is a big step in kind of making that leap into starting a small business. But in, in yours specifically, what would you say was the biggest factor in it becoming a popular site? Was it the advertising? Was it the, the kind of word of mouth from previous customers or anything specifically that you did? I think one thing, I think for me at least, I always try to focus it on what I would be looking at when I purchase a baking class from someone else or a product. Mm. I, I wanted to see beautiful pictures, like that the design is like nice and beautiful and that you would be getting something when you buy it, what you saw in the photo. And another big factor is like being in contact with your client and being mm. able to listen to them and what their needs are and what they tell you also that they would like to see or that they didn't like or that they did like. So that's a good thing. And I feel that I always say that it's my Latin culture thing that I'm very close and warm with people. So I feel that has absolutely made a little bit of a difference between like my business and maybe another one is that I know absolutely all the names of my clients. And if they come in, I say hi by their name. Mm -hmm. So that's been really nice for me too, because I'm alone here. So they're kind of like my little family <laughs> in this area. <laughs> and you talked about er, earlier, you talked about how you have kind of flexibility within your schedule as opposed to a normal corporate job. Um, but even if you have flexibility, what's what's a normal day or what's a normal week? A normal week, well, I I push myself a lot. So I I start working like around 8.30, 9. Mm -hmm. Most of it is also computer time, like sitting here in my office, uh, like updating the website, seeing the order, seeing the classes, trying to figure it out, like what, what I'm going to do next, if I want to bring someone over. Um, I work a lot during the weekends too. That's when people want to take a class or they want to celebrate something. So it's a trade-off. I have more flexibility, but I also work when people don't want to work. I didn't ever work during the weekends before. But I get to take a day off during the week if I work during the weekends. And mm -hmm. you kind of like balance it out and try to mm -hmm. make some time for yourself too. Is there something that you, would you say kind of when it comes to is it hard to manage almost everything you do is that kind of a learning factor for you or was that a learning factor yes i think it's hard managing everything because i'm from the bread baker to the finance department 
and it's hard um, not having someone to tell you like your like chores or right. tasks yeah. during the day because it depends on, absolutely on me. So you really need to be like mature enough to know that there's nobody coming after me uh -huh. being like happy you didn't do that. It's just me and knowing what I need to do and how I need to achieve it and being responsible enough to be able to make it work. If you well, because if you have your heart into this, you really want to make it work. So you, you don't even care if I don't have someone like trying to give me my tasks or anything because I know what I need to do. Mm -hmm. Would you say would you say that's like the biggest advice you'd give to younger students who may who may want to be in your position to kind of have a hundred percent passion for what they're doing? I feel that you need to have at least eighty percent passion. The other 20, there it's crazy how I also tell my friends how things change in the way. Like mm -hmm. I open this with this idea and then like things start opening up. Like someone reached out to me to do something else that I never thought even doing mm -hmm. or they offered me, I don't know, opening a place somewhere else. So having the courage to do it, I feel that's the most I would have told myself that when I was 18, like, don't mm -hmm. be scared. This is the best moment in your life to do something if you want to do it. And what's the worst that can happen? Mm -hmm. Well, Nothing. Ms. Montoya, thank you so much for joining us today. I appreciate your time to offer career advice to the students of North Penn. And as like a kind of um, thing we do here, do you, do you have any last minute sentiment or advice that you'd give to um, students that are watching this today or in the future? Yes, I would say, well, as I said, have the courage, take the risks, ask the questions that if you're wondering, like, I don't know if what's my life like, or if you want to come to a bakery to see what I do or meet me, reach out. I feel like most of the people are always open to show other people or younger people what they do. And sometimes at that age, we're like, oh, you're more shy. You're like, oh, I don't want to bother. Go ahead and bother. There's nothing wrong and you'll get 100% uh, more of an idea what you want to do in life if you are able to go and see what other people do. Thank you. And for everybody at home, you can all watch all of our episodes of the Career Pathway Exploration Series on the North Penn Television YouTube channel at youtube.com slash NPTV. I'm Jojo Dalwadi. Thank you all for watching with us today. And we'll see you next time on Career Pathway Explorations. Mm -hmm.